Back in early April, we said goodbye to State Transit Authority of New South Wales, with the final regions making their way over to Transdev John Holland buses. For many commuters, it was just a simple change in stickers, and maybe even went unnoticed, but for many of the enthusiast crowd, it really was the end of an era. I marked that changeover with a farewell video the night before, which many of you have probably seen already. But if not, it is well worth watching after this review, even if it's just for the montage at the end. Bus tech became a bigger part of the fleet in State Transit's twilight years, and most STA buses have now carried over to respective region operators. My tardiness means that this review was filmed back when this Scania K280UB with a bus tech VST body was still at State Transit. The buses that made up part of this review have now made their way over to Transdev John Holland. Until I was doing the fleet list research for this episode, I was almost certain that this was a Scania K310UB thanks to that coach air aircon on the roof. I had assumed, wrongly, that all of the K280s had the Cooltech units, but a closer look at the fleet list corrected me, thankfully before I published this review. Let's jump on board one of the later build Scania K280UB VSTs from before the takeover. For those of you that have been regular bus passengers in Sydney in recent years, this interior is probably quite familiar to you, not only thanks to the very ubiquitous STA graffiti fabric, but also thanks to the bus tech floor layout. The K280UB kicked off the STA bus tech trend very nearly a decade ago now, with 2250ST being built back in 2013. New build bus techs managed to remain part of the STA story almost until the end, when a few custom denning elements rounded out the order book. Bustech's interior layout is quite interesting, but there's hardly a consensus about its design. Some love the extra seating capacity the sloped floor can offer, and others are not a fan of the layout as it can be less comfortable for standing passengers. As I've always maintained, the key focus should be on how well a given vehicle performs its given task, and I do reject ultimatum statements as much as possible. As a standing passenger, the sloped floor means that you need to pay a little more attention to your balance. But today, that's not an issue as it's a quiet Saturday afternoon. The rear door step down also makes it a bit more difficult for passengers with limited mobility to use the rear door to exit, which is probably a greater oversight when the goal should be to develop an easily accessible transport network. Being a K280UB, this bus has, you guessed it, 280 horsepower and is rated for Euro 5 emissions. Power is sent through a 6 speed ZF and there's up to 1400 new metres of torque on tap, which is pretty healthy. Let's have a listen now.
These buses have become key workhorses of the Sydney Transport Network, just like the Volvos, Mercedes and Scania L-Series, with custom coaches, Volvo and Ansair bodies that preceded them. And in many ways, bus tech was quite innovative, bringing back yellow safety handrails not seen since the Ansairs, and introducing braille on the stop bells, which was new for state transit. It took me a little longer to get used to the stoplight being behind the driver's cab instead of in the centre, especially as someone who used to catch Clark's Logan, Transdev Kapalabar and Surfside Bus Tech products on a regular basis. Scanners, and they were quite a defining moment in the state transit fleet story. This was the first big contract that Bus Tech won with a government operator and added a little flair to the fleet after many, many years of custom coaches rigid buses at state transit. It felt quite novel reading about state transit getting their first Bus Tech VST and scary on a personal level knowing that was nearly a decade ago. How life has changed since. So, thank you for joining me, and I will see you again soon.